hear you breathe, but I can't see If you're right here next to me Something's wrong, wasn't it fun? Is it now we're done? You get dressed, I'm like a mess And you tell me to come uh, Something I wanted to share is that I met and I ran into an 88 year old And you know, I asked him if he had no regrets in his life And usually people at that age have a lot of regret uh, they usually say, I wish, you know, I, I actually did school. I wish I actually went for my dreams. I wish I did all of this and that and this and all those things. Um, but I was surprised by his answer. And the answer he gave me was, I have no regrets. Uh, and realistically, when you think about it, how many people can say at the age of 88 years old, he has leukemia now, can say, I have no regrets in life and I'm happy for everything I did? Not many people. And surprisingly, because most people at his age always say they have a lot of regrets they wish they did a lot more things in their life but what he shared was no I don't have any regrets and I was blown away I'm like what but you have no regrets he said no I mean I was in the military I was deployed in Korea for five months straight in non-stop combat the fact that I even survived that is amazing and a miracle within itself you have no regrets I'm 88 years old I'm living a long life even though I have leukemia, I still am expected to live longer than expected. And, uh, and he said, yeah, I just am happy. I just did what I wanted and I, I have my family and I'm thankful for my kids. And it just blew me away. And just hearing that at 88 years old, when you think about it, how many people can say at the age of 88, I have no regrets? Uh, not many people can say, I'm happy with how my life was lived. If I was to die today, I'll be fine. But he was able to say that. And that, that's something I want to achieve, that when I reach 100 years old, even if I reach, if I reach 40, I want to say that I was happy with my life. I have no regrets. So I think that's one thing that we need to remember is that we can't just look at what's right in front of us. We have to be able to look, not just at now, not just at the short term, but the long term. The decisions you make today, where are they going to take you 20 years from now, 30 years from now, 40 years from now? Is what you're doing today really the wisest thing you can do that will help you in your future 40 years from now when everyone else is, what, gone? What I'm doing isn't just for now. The reason that I do what I do, code, YouTube, and everything is because I look at the long run. Yeah. Alright. I know I said I was going to talk about um, other ways and how you can fight laziness to be a programmer. And I guess that goes with this. I mean, why are you learning code? You have to remember, right? I know there are times when learning code can be a drag. Well, then think about it. Why are you doing it? What is the result of your hard work? Or you could say, what will be the consequences of being lazy? Number one, you have to remember why you're doing it. Bring you, like, where will putting so much work in code bring you in the future? To remember why you're doing it and how it could really change your life. So that's number one. Remember why you're doing it. Look at the long-term goals, not the short-term. Number two, coming up in a second. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'm here. I'm here at uh, Norm's right now. About to order. I just ordered a uh, spinach, mushroom, and omelet with some hash browns. And so here, what I need to talk about is a second way you can go ahead and prevent yourself from becoming a lazy programmer uh, that can prevent you from learning code. The second thing you can do it just you have to learn to celebrate the small things also um as some of you guys know i'm doing like so much shredding right now and i'm trying to eat healthy and even for me too what am i doing is that i'm celebrating just you know not eating fried food for one day resisting that piece of candy even though that one piece of candy might not make a big difference on really my diet at all but that small thing i need to learn to celebrate and not think that it's nothing because it's a big thing it's a big a uh, huge jump from what I used to eat too. So when it comes to programming, I think what we need to learn is to learn to celebrate even a small thing, such as, you know, yeah, maybe you never knew what, uh, like doing functions, how when you click on a certain div or element, what that function does is that it displays a div or hides a div. Maybe you don't even know what a class or ID is yet. Maybe you just learned what an ID or a class is. As small as that may seem to you, you know something that 99.9% .9 of the world doesn't know. You know classes and divs, you know how to select IDs, you know how to create a basic website. No one knows how to do that. And so, what we need to learn to do that can prevent us from being lazy is that even the small things we learn every day is huge. Maybe you learn how to use arrays. 
That may seem like it's nothing, it might be hard to learn, but arrays are huge in this industry. Something you use of almost every single project, to be quite honest. So what we need to do is to learn to celebrate even the small things, the small successes that we have, even on just very tiny things like CSS, HTML, whatever it is. Learn to celebrate those small things too, and realize you don't have to create a big project to think that you had a good day in coding. So celebrate the small things, and be thankful for that, and don't take those small things for granted, because you know a lot already. I'm at Norm's and I'm about to eat, so I'll see you guys later. <laughs> Dang. Shoot. There's a second accident. Oh my gosh. Shoot. That's crazy. Alright YouTube, so we're here. We're here at a Thai restaurant. Look how legit it is. But number three, the third way to make sure that you don't become lazy at learning programming is you need to find a mentor. You need to find someone who could really encourage you, someone that you can meet up with. Maybe you're just following me on YouTube where I could push you every uh, couple days a week. Or maybe you know you know someone, a person that could push you, where they could keep you accountable and make sure you're always improving and always having progress within the language you're trying to learn. Uh, mentorship is very important, and that's what I have at my company, where people are guiding me, pushing me to not just stay the same, but always get better, helping me improve in how to speak to people. So number three is get a mentor. What's this for? How is it? Good? Hey YouTube, what is up everyone? It is Friday and I'm gonna finish up uh, the five steps and what you need to do to fight laziness in learning programming. So I'm here, I just woke up getting ready for church. Church starts in an hour or so. But I just arrived, I went to Chipotle. I'm still on that summer shredding diet. I got a beef bowl, okay right here. I got a beef bowl, I got double steak, double brown rice, double beans, uh, double black beans, medium and mild sauce. And this is a lot, I cannot eat all of this. I mean I can, but I won't. So my goal is to eat. It's about almost lunchtime right now, it's about 11 a.m. So I'm gonna eat this now, and I'll eat the second half around three or four p.m. So that'll sort of be like my lunch and dinner. Maybe I'll eat a light snack, a banana, some fruits, uh, a little later tonight when I get hungry. So. All right, the day begins. I'll see you guys later after church. Bye. <laughs> All right, guys, what's up? So I just got out of church. Um, and now, next thing I want to talk about, or the fourth thing you can do to go ahead and make sure that you don't lose your passion and determination in learning code. Number four is just create a portfolio and maintain it. Why is this so important? It's because when you create a portfolio, you have a goal of making it better all the time, you tend to stay more focused and trying to complete it in the long run. For example, making a website. And of course, the first website you ever make will be not Good looking it'll probably be pretty ugly but what you do is as you're learning more code as you get better you're continuously updating it you continuously making more websites to add to portfolio so make sure that you have a portfolio that you can use upgrade and always make better and that's another way and that's what I do actually on personal stuff at work to keep motivated to keep making and learning even PHP itself so that's number four number five will come in a second all right YouTube so I just left the cafe where I usually make all the changes um, now number five number fifth thing that can help you from really being lazy and being complacent when it comes to learning code is just doing it, man. You know, there are times, even for me, times I feel lazy, I don't want to study PHP, but I know I need to do it, I know I need to stay competitive. So what I do, I just stop whatever I'm doing, whether it's YouTube, whether I'm watching TV, and all I do is just, you know what, I need to stop what I'm doing right now, and I need to put at least a little bit of time in code. So just do it, don't wait. Just, you know, realize why you need to do it, why you need to start making that change, why you need to start coding, and remember why you're doing it in the first place. But all right, guys. Um, number six, uh, number six thing that you can do to help you from you know keep you from getting burned out is just learning to have balance. You don't have to code 24/7. You don't have to code every single second of the day. But really learn, you know, that maybe you could code only two or three hours a day, if not even an hour. Whatever you need to do to make sure that you don't stop learning. So that's definitely something that you can do to prevent you from really burning out. And hi. <laughs> that's definitely something that you can do to prevent you from burning out make sure that you can keep coding and that's what I do I mean I don't code 24 7 although I technically code 40 hours a week like many other people I do YouTube on the side what else do I do I uh, watch movies once a week I get dinner often with Midori uh, I study the Bible and I found my balance 
that's what keeps me going every single day. So that's something you need to learn to do also. Don't code all the time, but just find that balance and what you can do to help you push you. All right, last one, number seven is coming out really soon. All right, YouTube, this is gonna be the last one. Uh, tip number seven, one way to really be able to overcome lasernesses of le learning code is just to really learn to be part of a community. You know, whether it's a Slack channel, Treehouse, um, I actually started a Discord channel where there's about, I believe, 80 people who's already joined uh, my channel and pretty much I barely talk on there. I'll just like drop in every once in a while, but you could go ahead and you could join my Discord channel where, um, and I'll put the link in the description where you could just literally just join where uh, everyone could just talk about code programming and encourage each other <laughs> talk about um, you know just anything encourage each other ask questions about HTML PHP you know what's the best framework to work in and there's a lot of intelligent people on there who have some experience in coding or there are people who are already employed there are people who just got hired as programming I mean, as a programmer so you could go ahead and join that channel, be part of a community where we support each other, encourage each other, and eventually I'll start adding moderators as more people join. And just being part of a community. Just in YouTube alone, this is a community of my channel where the same people literally leave the comments, same comments over and over again. Where the same people, uh, they start to know each other and leave replies on each comment. And now that's and that's why I made my Discord channel because I wanted to create a community where people could communicate with one another, where I could actually speak with you guys directly and ask, you know, what am I not including my videos that you want to see? What have I not done yet? What is it that you don't like? Some people said they don't like that I have music in the background when I talk about emotional things. And that's something I personally like in videos I watch and that's why I did that. But I started like, you know, limiting how many times I do do that now because of that. So, you know, it's just a good way to even communicate directly with me, but with other developers literally all around the world. There are people from the Philippines, Canada, Australia, uh, the Middle East. There are people from uh, India. There are people from uh, South America, from everywhere, Europe, UK, all around the world, who are in my Discord channel that communicate with one each other, with one another, literally throughout the day. So be part of a supportive community that can help you, encourage you, push you, and even give you tips. Um, but yeah, those are the seven tips. I really hope that this video helps everyone out in overcoming the struggle of just having self-discipline and pushing yourself. Because I'll tell you this, I go through that also. Even I myself have hardships. There might be days where I don't code because of all the things that I do all the time. So yeah, that's the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. I hope to help you out. If you have any other suggestions on how you can overcome that just laziness of not wanting to code because you just don't feel like it, post it in the comment below. If it's a good answer, a good comment, I'll probably pin it at the top. Love you guys. Thank you for watching. This is Krishan, Life of Web Developer, and I'm Bella.